Hello and welcome. Today we're talking squash and pumpkins. Well, winter squash really. A pumpkin is simply a variety of winter squash. Just as a butternut squash is a variety of winter squash. Most of you are probably used to seeing the butternut squash. It's a very common variety sold in our UK supermarkets and around the globe as far as I'm aware. But maybe not. Write in the comments, you may know different. Another squash that's become quite common in our UK supermarkets over the past few years has been the curry squash. It's a deeper orange onion shaped squash. These are both curry squashes. One's a little bit larger than the other, as you see, but they'll have the same wonderful sweet tasting flesh on the inside. This year I've also grown some crown prints and some pink banana. This is quite a small pink banana. They do get a lot bigger. Banana because of its banana-y shape and pink because of its slightly peachy flesh. Some of the squash I grew this year though didn't come from packets of seeds I bought at the shops. They were seeds I had saved from pumpkins I grew the year before. Or squash. I'm sorry, I will cross mix the name pumpkin and squash. As far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing. All squashies are pumpkins and all pumpkins are squashies. This you, winter squash pumpkin, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll have seen before. And I grew the plant that grew this squash from seeds I harvested out of a Turk's turban last year. So the year before I had grown Turk's turbans and last winter I ate the Turk's turban fruit with my supper and kept the seeds. I know it's Turk's turban, one, because the label on my packet of kept seeds said Turk's turban. And that's what I was hoping would grow when I planted them. Instead, I got these, which I think is even better. <laughs> they have tasted wonderful. I've cooked a few already and made some soups and thrown them into a, cubes into a stew. They've been delicious. We carved quite a few of these over the Halloween period because it's a nice big carving size. This bottom bit is very Turk's turban shaped, though usually the Turk's turban will have a bulge sticking out, not be quite this flat. But this strange peachy colour is nothing like a Turk's turban I've ever seen, or this bluey tinge we have. So maybe it got crossed with a crown prince to give me this turquoisey colour. But then, where did this peach come from? Was it pink banana? So I do not know, but it's great and I love it. And I will be keeping some seeds from this to see what grows next year. And put this big heavy one out of the way a moment. And the main reason for this video at all today is one of the varieties I've grown this year is a small variety of squash called Delicata. Now I like Delicata. I've grown it before. It has a very sweet tasting inner flesh and a texture a bit like mashed potato. The sizes are good, just right for a one person supper. So I know for every person I'm serving, I'll just cook one squash and we'll get enough flesh for a good dinner. But just like my Turk's turban last year, when I ate my delicatas that I had grown in my own garden, I harvested some seeds to grow this year. And that's what I did. I grew lots of seeds from my own delicata. Some of my delicata plants grew delicatas, just as I would expect. But a couple of my plants grew a delicata that had no stripes on it. They usually start with a very pale creamy flesh and green stripes and as the fruit ripens up it goes to this deep buttery yellow and the stripes turn orange. This never had any stripes on it 
it was quite pale and creamy when it started on the plant and it's ripened up to a nice yellow fruit. They taste just like the delicatas. I have eaten a couple already. And some of my delicata plants grew fruits that were bright orange. No stripes, no buttery yellow color, bright orange. Again, they taste the same, but the most surprising one of all from my mix of harvested seeds is this big fellow that grew from my delicata plant. This is a normal sized delicata squash. A decent big handful for one nice dinner. This huge monster <laughs> grew from a seed harvested out of a small delicata like this. I do not know what cross-pollinated the seeds to make this enormous long squash. It looks like a delicata, it's just too big. So today I'm going to chop this up and roast it for supper and I'm also going to keep some of its seeds and see if we can grow some more of these next year. Heaven knows what will come out of them. It depends what this cross-pollinated with. So that's the excitement of growing winter squash. If you buy a seed packet from the store or a reputable garden supplier and it tells you it's a butternut squash, when you grow those seeds into plants, they will produce fruits that are butternut squash They've been carefully selected and carefully pollinated to guarantee that you get what you choose and pay for. If you order a packet of seeds that says it's a curry squash, curry squash is what you will grow. But if you go to the shops and buy an interesting squash from the shelf, maybe you'll see a blue one and think that looks fun, I'll have that for a change and collect and harvest those seeds. There is no guarantee the plant you grow is going to produce more of these. If you collect the seeds from your squash in your garden, just like me, if you harvest the seeds out of your butternut squash that you grew yourself, unless the only other squash you were growing were butternut squashes and your neighbours were only growing butternut squashes, you can't be certain what's going to pop out of this. And as far as I'm concerned, that adds to the wonder and excitement of growing your own food. So I'm going to prepare this one for supper tonight and keep some seeds for growing next year. So here goes. Time to chop up this big boy and see what he's like. I don't know if he'll be seeds all the way along in a hollow tube or if this is going to be like a butternut. You get a lot of flesh here and then a hollow bit near the bottom. Let's see what he's got to offer inside. I don't know where to tackle it. It's got to fit in this dish. So he's too long. So I'm definitely going to have to cut him in half. So we'll start with that. Ooh, hollow tube all the way along. Need my plastic tray to put some seeds on. There we go. A tray or a plate or something to dry the seeds out a bit. Cut this in half longy ways as well. All the way down. It's a very pale flesh inside. Quite a lot of the delicatas have a pale flesh. Though they have this very buttery coloured outer skin, the inner flesh is not orange like a pumpkin. It's a much paler, creamy colour. Ooh, lots of seeds, lovely. Let's put them on my tray. Amazing when you think each one of these little seeds will grow a whole plant that'll have four or five fruits on it. That's probably all I need to keep. And do the same with this other top half. 
half of squash. Be nice. And keep your fingers out of the way, especially carving hard, strong vegetables. Because a sudden jolt like that, you'll soon take your fingers off. Not so many seeds at the top end. Oh, I don't know. A few. Mainly empty fluff up this higher end of squash. So now I've taken out plenty of seeds for keeping out the fluffy bits. We've got all this slightly stringy fluffy flesh in the middle that the seeds were hanging on to. We'll scoop that out and drop it in the compost. <gasps> a few extra seeds, as if I don't have enough. I can't resist gathering up all the nice looking ones. I'm just using a dessert spoon to scrape out the soft fluffy flesh from the middle. The same as you would with a melon. Just till I get to this firmer, more dense flesh. for the oven. They fit a bit of a squash in a roasting dish. Will it go that way? Oh if I cut a slice off it I can fit it in the dish this way. Let's cut some slices. Maybe about an inch off the end. Will that fit? Yay! And the same with this one. Yay! Two bits of squash in my dish. Now I've put them this way up so that the nice soft squishy inner flesh is going to be protected from the overheat of the oven. These other pieces I'm going to use a potato peeler on to take off the outer skin. We cube these up and steam them in a bowl in the microwave. So today, that's all I'm going to do with these. I'm going to wrap this dish in tin foil so the tops don't scorch in the oven and pop this in the oven, probably for about 45 minutes till the inner flesh is all soft and squishy. If you have a lid for your casserole tin pot dish, pop the lid on, it'll be fine. I just want to help keep the moisture in. Into the oven we go, probably about 180, 200 degrees centigrade. So now I'm going to peel this remaining bit. Oh, more wonderful compost. Or if you keep pigs and chickens, They'll enjoy eating this. But if you keep pigs and chickens, you already know that. And just trim the flesh off these little half moon pieces. I had to cut off the bigger bit because it wouldn't fit in my pot. them that shape. Bit there. Let's trim that soft bit up there. It's not soft rotten, it's just soft. Some of that fluffy seed holding flesh was still stuck in the middle. There we go. There. Now these chunks I'm going to treat slightly differently. I'm putting them in my microwavable bowl but you could use a roasting dish and put them in the oven like we've done the big chunks but i'm going to dress these with all sorts of delicious things so we'll start if we can get the lid off a light olive oil just to give them a bit of a sticky coating 
and I'll get a teaspoon. Some garlic powder. I'm just going to sprinkle on. Take some garlic powder and some smoked paprika. I think it's got to be one of my favourite spicy additives. Mmm, smells gorgeous even in the jar. There we go. About a teaspoon of each. If you have onion powder, I would put that in as well. But I don't have any left, it's all gone. And I'm also going to add some butter. Decent knob of proper butter. Let's stir them all about to get them all coated with those seasonings. Oh, big fetch. Lid on and into the microwave they go. 10, 15 minutes should be plenty. I'll put them in for 10 minutes and give them a stir and see how they're getting on. Here we are after 10 minutes in the microwave. Our squash all ready to serve for dinner. Pinch of salt, I think. And these will be a delicious. Ooh, bit more. There we go. Beautiful homegrown squash, ready for dinner. Yum. So here we are, hot out of the oven. I cooked it for 45 minutes, then turned off the heat and left it sitting there for a further 15 minutes in the heat of the oven. It should be nice and soft and ready to scoop out of the flesh. Ooh, hot and steamy. Now then, see if I can flip these over. There we go. And then we can just, you can't see, my spoon, I can just scrape the soft flesh out of the inside. I wonder if I can turn this one the other way over. Surprising how much liquid there is in the bottom of this roasting tin. There's lots more still to scoop out of there. So once you've scooped out all your lovely soft pumpkin flesh, I'm just going to add some butter. Shush. <laughs> oh. And a little salt and pepper to taste. roasted pumpkin ready to serve as a side vegetable with any meal. Delicious and hot. Mmm. Oh that is yummy. <laughs> Lovely. So bye for now, we'll see you next time and whatever you're doing today, have fun and enjoy it.